Welcome to Brooklyn Middle School. At the beginning of each school year, we go over a code of conduct, which is a review of our school handbook. These are expectations that all students and staff are to follow. We have split the code of conduct into two parts. Today, we'll be going over part one. The school day at Brooklyn Middle begins at 810 and ends at 240. Make sure you arrive by 8.05 so you can be on time for your first class. The doors to our building do open at 7.50 a.m. However, you are not allowed in the building before then. So if you walk or get dropped off, you will have to wait by the doors by the cafeteria until that first bell rings. Students are not allowed in the building after 2.50 p.m. unless supervised by a staff member. So that gives you 10 minutes to get your things and head on out of the building. Remember, once you leave the building, you cannot re-enter the building. Attendance procedures. All children aged 7 through 17 must attend school. If you plan to be absent from school, your parent or guardian must call the school. Please try to do so between 7 and 9 a.m. It is the parent's responsibility to notify the school within three days of the student's absence, otherwise the absence will be considered truant. Unexcused absences might be some of the following reasons. This means you're not excused from class. So if you miss the bus, don't have clean clothes, uh, stay at home to babysit younger siblings, oversleep, or if you have chronic medical excuses without a doctor's note, you are not excused from class. Attendance will be taken in all three learning scenarios, in person, hybrid, and when we are doing distance learning. Students will be required to submit attendance online for distance learning days for the hybrid and distance learning models. Please make sure that you check in each day with your teachers. Students must stay on school property once they arrive for the school day. If a student needs to leave school for an appointment, they must have their parent or guardian permission and must sign out in the office. The parent should send a note with their child or call the school and the student will get a pass before the school day starts so they can leave during their designated time. The parent must come into the office to sign their student out and show a photo ID. Students will not be released to any unauthorized person on their list. Students who do leave school without permission will not be allowed to return to school. No student who is sick may leave the school without seeing our school nurse. Health services. Emergency forms are kept in the nurse's office. Please make sure to update your emergency contact information every year so that if a student is sick or injured, they can be released to a parent or guardian that is listed on that form. Medications are also kept in the nurse's office, both prescription and over the counter. Make sure you have your medication form filled out in order to have medications kept at school. For the most up-to-date COVID preparedness plan information, please see our District 279 and BMS websites. Brooklyn Middle School is a closed campus. That means students cannot come or go to school without parent or guardian permission and signing out in the office. If a student does leave without permission, they may be searched when they return to the building. Outside food from parents or vendors is also not allowed and will be sent back home with the parent. Also, to ensure the health and safety of staff and students, the school has implemented procedures to limit visitors, volunteers, and any outside activity that comes into the school. These measures are taken to help reduce the number of people within the school that could potentially spread the coronavirus. In addition, protective barriers will be placed at the first point of contact in the main office of the school. While in a hybrid model, parents will not be allowed to volunteer in the school building. Students who arrive late to school must report to the office for an admit slip or a pass after 8.30 in the morning. If students do not have an approved excuse, the tardy will be recorded as unexcused or truant and consequences will be assigned. Throughout the day, if students are late to class, they may be assigned a teacher consequence. This includes students who are in the building with enough time to make it to their first class but are tardy. Late buses. Late buses are only for students who are participating in a school sport or activity, working with a teacher, or have an assigned attention. 
When we start late buses, they will actually leave Brooklyn Middle School at 4.30 p.m. on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. We do not have late buses on Mondays and Fridays. Students who are suspended from the regular bus for behavior consequences may not ride the late bus. Students who leave school property may not return to school to ride the late bus home. More information is to come at a later date as to when our late activity buses will begin. School dress code and clothing. Students are expected to be clean, neat, and dressed appropriately for the school day. Articles of clothing or words or symbols on personal property that are inappropriate or cause a disruption will not be allowed. Here are some examples that are inappropriate. These include, but are not limited to, this list. Please take a moment to look over the items on the list. In addition, outerwear and headgear cannot be worn during the school day because of health and safety reasons. This includes coats, jackets, and hats. Around the school, we have posters of what is expected for our dress code at BMS. Look for them around the school. Here is a list of what is expected from our students. Sleeveless shirts must cover your shoulder width, cover undergarments and midriffs, ripped pants with holes exposed above outstretched fingertips must be covered up. Shorts, skirts, and dresses must be longer than outstretched fingertips. No low cut or inappropriate necklines or open backs. Sunglasses are not worn indoors except for medical reasons. Coats, jackets, large purses, and backpacks must go into your locker. This exception is for the in-person model when we do not have lockers assigned. Hats or headgear must be removed before entering the building. Hoods are allowed if we can identify your face. Pants, shorts, and skirts must be worn on your waist or higher. And no slippers. If you feel cold, please make sure to bring a sweater or sweatshirt. Our dress code this year also includes face coverings. All staff, students, and other people present in the school building are required to wear a face covering. These are meant to protect other people in case the wearer does not know they are infected. Types of allowable face coverings do include paper or disposable masks, cloth face masks, scarves, neck gaiters, bandanas, religious face coverings, or medical grade masks and respirators. Please make sure to do your clothing checks at home before you come to school. And remember, if your clothing is inappropriate, you will be asked to change. If you do not have clothes to change into, you will be expected to change into donated clothing provided by BMS. This year, students may bring backpacks and book bags to school. The placement of your bag, lockers, or carrying around the school will be determined based on the three scenarios that we are in throughout the school year. To start the school, we are beginning distance, and then we'll go to hybrid. So in the hybrid model, we will allow students to carry a book bag around to their classes. This procedure supports secure and safe school initiatives. Cell phones and other electronic devices. These are expected to be turned off and put away when school starts at 8.10 and kept off until 2.40 p.m. The only exception to this is during lunchtime. Students may use their cell phones during lunch on a trial basis pending behavior. This does include, however, no pictures, no videos, no social media, and no Chromebook usage at lunch due to a potential damage. This does mean you can play games and other things on your devices. If you are on your phone during the school day and your item is used or heard by a staff member outside of lunch or in the morning time, it will be confiscated, bagged, and tagged and sent to the administration office. If it is your first time or your first offense, your item, your phone, or whatever electronic device you're using will be held in the main office until the end of the school day where you can pick it up. Students will need to sign for their device in order to receive it. If it happens a second time, the item will be unavailable, either kept in the office, kept at home, or with a check-in, check-out system to the student for three consecutive days, including the day it was taken. The confiscated item will be returned to the student at the end of each day. If this happens a third time, the item will be confiscated for five days and additional consequences may be assigned. A parent or guardian will need to pick up your confiscated item from the administrative office. This does not mean you as a student will get it back in the office. 
A parent or guardian or other adult may pick up the confiscated item with a required parent meeting and an expectation that the device stays at home or with an agreed arrangement with administration. Students will have access to school phones to contact parents or guardians during the day in case of an emergency. Also, student personal electronic devices are subject to search upon a reasonable suspicion that the device has been used in a manner that violates the law or our district policy 505. Chromebooks provided to students are district-owned devices and are used for educational purposes only. Students are expected to bring their district device to school and back home each day to use with their teachers and enhance their educational experience. Students are responsible for their own device. Reminder to bring your Chromebook each day, make sure it's fully charged, and only download authorized apps. Social media sites are not allowed. Please review the additional expectations below as any violation will result in disciplinary action. Next, we have our lunchroom behavior expectations. Arrive at lunch on time, line up without cutting in front of others, there's no save of seats or tables, clean up your table area, dump your tray, and remain seated while in the cafeteria. Students may not leave the lunchroom during lunch. Late students may be asked to wait to enter the cafeteria until a supervisor allows them to proceed to the lunch lines. Students who are found doing these things, such as running, cutting in line, leaving your lunch tray, arriving late, or respond or behave inappropriately or cause a disruption, may receive a detention, an assigned seat, a suspension, or other consequences. Make sure you keep your lunchroom safe and clean for everyone. Students may deposit money into their school account before 10 a.m. in the envelope slot in the cafeteria. Make sure to include your name and your lunch pin. You may bring sealed beverage containers into the building to drink during lunch, but make sure there are no glass containers. They are not allowed. Students who use the lunchroom, whether or not they eat, are asked to share the responsibilities for keeping the lunchroom clean. Inappropriate behavior or refusal to cooperate in cleaning when asked to do so will result in consequences. Absolutely no food outside the cafeteria during lunch. Hallway expectations. Injury can result when students run, push, shove, play fight, horse play, or trip other students in the halls or on the steps. Appropriate behavior is expected at all times. That means walk slowly, walk on the right side of the hallway, use the up stairwells and down stairwells appropriately, keep your hands, feet, and objects to yourself, and you must have a pass while in the hallway during class time. School lockers. During the hybrid model, we will not be assigning lockers right away. All students are still responsible for the contents of their backpack and or belongings. We may assign lockers as the year progresses. Here are the expectations that students are expected to follow when they have a locker. Students are encouraged not to bring expensive items to school, and personal items are not covered by school insurance. Keep your lock combination private. Use only your assigned locker as you are responsible for everything that's inside your locker. Make sure it's clean inside and out, and do not have any open food or drink containers. There is also no sharing of lockers. The school administration has the right to search your locker and or belongings at any time without notice. School lockers are the property of the school district. Inspection of the interior of your locker may be conducted by school authorities for any reason at any time without notice, without student approval, and without a search warrant. The personal possessions of a student within a locker may be searched only when school authorities have a reasonable suspicion that the search will uncover evidence of a violation of a school law or school rules. Students will be notified of a search of their possessions afterwards unless there's an ongoing investigation occurring. For reasons of health, safety, or suspected criminal activity, students may be asked to empty their pockets, purses, or bags, and or remove shoes and socks. A couple other pieces of important information are that skateboards and rollerblades may not be used in the building or on school grounds. We recommend that students do not ride expensive bicycles to school, and students are expected to lock bicycles in the racks that are provided. Middle school students are not to drive motorized bikes or cars to school. This is the end of Code of Conduct Part 1. Please move on to Code of Conduct Part 2.